Hi guys. Um, I did this a long time ago, a, a poetry blog, um, and I thought that I would start doing it again. Um, trying to create lots of ways to keep me uh, motivated with my work and to help others. So tonight I want to talk about um, trusting ourselves as artists in our work, within the realm of our work. I think a lot of times we can spend way too much time comparing ourselves to other people um, and just doubting ourselves. and I've been going through that a lot lately, ups and downs. If you've been reading my blogs, you definitely can tell. Um, and when that happens, I think the best thing to do is to go to people who have lived their lives and <clears throat> were passionate about their art and wrote things to help people get through it. And so I wanted to read something from a book called The Life of Poetry by Muriel Rukeyser. And she was a great activist and poet. Um, a poem is not its images any more than a symphony is its themes. A poem is not its words any more than a symphony is its notes. The image, the word, the note, those are methods by which the imaginative experience is presented and received. Faith is found here, not in a destiny radiating and parceling out knowledge and the earth, but in a people who, person by person, believes itself. Do you accept your own gestures and symbols? Do you believe what you yourself say? When you act, do you believe what you're doing? It comes to that if form is going to be achieved in life or art. But we cannot stop here. If we settle for honesty, we are selling out. All we can show people is themselves. Show them what passion they possess, and we will have come to the poetry. Um, obviously, what I've just read can be applied to all the arts, any area of life, actually. Um, and when I first read that, I was actually on a plane coming back from New York after visiting uh, Sarah Lawrence last year. Um, not thinking that I'd get in. <laughs> uh, and when I read that, it really struck me when she said, do you yourself believe what you say? And whether we're <clears throat> creating a painting or writing a poem or um, a song or writing a book, a novel, I think the most important part with all the critics aside, your inner critic, other critics, other artists, with everything aside, I think you really have to sit down and ask yourself, is this what is what I'm writing the truth, my inner truth? Is do I believe what I'm saying? Because I think if you're truly honest with yourself, then you're really gonna reach people. And um it's hard. I think that's the hardest part about writing or creating anything is is looking inside yourself and being honest with what you find there because you may find something beautiful, but you may also find something shameful, um, hurtful, painful, and but that's okay, because other people will relate. And I think we spend a lot of time, or at least I do, I can't say we, but I spend a lot of time um, being a perfectionist and trying to make everything pretty and nice and um, I don't want anything, I don't want to, I'm so preoccupied with, with being dishonest that I am dishonest and um, that I go through writer's block and beat myself up and anyway, tonight I just wanted to um, send down a word of encouragement by uh, someone much smarter than me <laughs> and uh, Okay, one more thing uh, I wanted to say before I left. Along with seeing if what you're saying is true, I think that it's important to examine what you're, you're working on or, or writing. Are you passionate about it? Is it something you feel in your body? Um, I know when I 
been going through writer's block, I'll beat myself up about not having any inspiration, and I'll come up with these ideas. I think recently came up with an idea to write a series poem about a monk who was stuck in a monastery and he's losing his faith and he's writing letters to someone. Um, and I, <laughs> I might still do that, but then I got sidetracked and started writing about West Texas and I found that it came a lot easier and it helped me get out of my writer's block because I, I think the monk idea was, is a good, was a good idea, but, um, my heart wasn't in it. It might be in it later. Um, maybe it's something that will come, but uh, instead I started writing about West Texas unexpectedly um, due to a friend's blog that inspired me. Um, and um, so anyway, I guess I just want to say that if you find yourself having difficulties Go back to what you know, go back to your childhood, go back to something that really makes you feel it all over your body. Um, I know that place is important to me. Um, there have been lots of places that I've fallen in love with and, of course, grown up in West Texas. And you don't realize how important that place is to you until you you leave. Um, I'm sure when I move wherever it is I move after this I will miss New York, New York City, maybe even my crazy landlord's cats, although I doubt that I'll miss them because um, they're crazy and they follow me everywhere, but maybe I'll write a poem about them. Anyway, <laughs>